Apart from the Python core logging library, there are a couple of other ways you can implement logging in Python. Let's look at them. The first one is the log4p library. For that, we first need to import log4p. Let's comment out the older code. Log4p is not available in this environment. Let's install it. We'll go to File Settings, then select the Python interpreter and search for log4p. Using log4p, you can implement basic logging. Let's install the package. It got installed successfully. Let's close this. We'll try to run it. Now it recognizes log4p. Instead of changing the entire application, we can just change the declaration of logging to point to the new log4p package. Let's comment out this. We'll declare a logger class using the log4p getLogger method, and then from the logger, we can get the logging object and use that for logging the way we did earlier. Let's run this. It says logging is not defined. We'll move it outside the class. Now we can see that there are two files, log4p debug, which will have all the debug outputs, and log4p errors, which will have all the error outputs. Since we did not have any error statements, nothing got written to this file. Let's go back to the class and add a dummy error statement. Now let's go to the log4p errors file, and we can see a log statement with the error message. This is how you can use the log4p library, and it can be configured as well. Let's understand how to do that. We'll create a configuration file and keep it under the root directory. Let's first create a file called log4p.json, and within this file, we can specify the configuration. We'll go to the log4p official page, copy a standard configuration, and use that to define our application's configuration. This is a standard configuration that specifies the debug file details and the error file details. Let's make some minor changes. We'll call it futurex and we'll rename this to futurex. Here instead of debug, we'll print warnings. Now we need to include this log4pjson file in the declaration. We need to specify the config so we'll say config equals log for p.json. Let's delete these old log files. Now let's run it. We can see the log file names have been changed and the debug file contains errors because we set it to display warnings or higher. The error file displays the errors If we change the configuration to info here, or change it back to debug and run it again, we can see the debug statements. This is how you can configure the log4p implementation. There is another package available in Python called log4python, which can also be used for logging. It is based on log4j version 2, which is the latest version of the log4j library, a popular library for Java and Scala. Log4j version 2 supports asynchronous logging and writes logs to files at a much higher rate. Using log4python, you can get the same benefits within a Python application. And to use log4python in our application, we need to make sure it is installed in the Python environment. 
we can either do a pip install for log4python or go to PyCharm and add that package. Let's add it here. We'll install it. Log4Python also requires the fire package. Let's install that. Fire has been installed. Let's close this. Now we'll go to the driver program and instead of log4p, we'll import log4python. We'll import log from the log4python class then we'll declare a logging object using the log class. Let's give it a name, logfutureX, and simply run it. This ran fine, and we can see that a logs directory got created. Under that, we have a default log which contains the log messages. We can also configure log for Python. For that, we would require a configuration file in the root directory. This time, we'll create a Python file and call it log4.py. Then we'll use the standard configuration available on the log4python official website. This configuration has various parameters, such as log level, output format, and file size limit. Let's rename the file to log4p.py. We'll make a very simple change. We'll change the output log file name to futurexrooterror.log. We'll run it. Now we can see the new error file getting generated, futurexcore-root-error.log, which contains the error messages. You can try changing different configuration parameters in the log4py file and see the corresponding output. So you can either use log4p, log4python, or the default Python logging library for logging in your PySpark application. For the rest of the course, we'll be sticking to the Python logging library. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more informative content on cloud, data, AI, and generative AI. Hit the bell icon to receive future notifications. Check out our popular Udemy course on big data, Hadoop, and Spark, linked in the description.